Good morning. What a glorious Sunday to praise the Lord. Welcome all who are in our sanctuary and those who watch us on uh, Facebook and other means. I welcome you in the name of Jesus on this uh, first Sunday in summer. I need to see uh, Sharon White up here for a moment. It's uh, official. Uh, Sharon attended her first Congregational Council meeting as our new lay leader. So uh, I wanted to officially uh, welcome her. She's going to uh, give this a shot at least till the end of the year to see if she enjoys working with uh, the grumpy old pastor. And uh, her role is to help me as a representative of the congregation to help me baptize babies and to help me welcome new members, and uh, to be a voice and an ear uh, to the congregation. If someone needs to uh, chat with me and they would rather not chat with me, they can uh, talk to uh, Sharon. So one of these potted plants is yours. You're gonna have to fight for which one you want. Marilyn helped me pick them out. Okay. And she brought them today, so one of those are yours, and I welcome you. Let's welcome Thank Sharon. You. Thank you. Where's uh, Ron Bernard? He went home. Ron has uh, stepped up, has left his job as trustee co-chair and has now assumed the position of a trustee chair. And uh, uh, I wanted to welcome you and thank you for stepping up. You come with a lot of experience from Kodak with pumps and motors and mechanical things, so uh, we welcome you. I do not have a flower for you. Don't go away. You get the coveted, the coveted silver hammer. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. I, uh, I need a microphone, Larry. This sounds too loud. Is it too loud? I'm, I'm trying something different with a... Yeah, I, I will. You have a microphone. Please come up and uh, give us an update. Rightly or wrongly, I went into Doug's office on Thursday. Uh, many of us saw him this past week and we were uh, disheartened. I went into his office on Thursday, Thursday afternoon. And uh, I took his name tag off his office and I prayed uh, that Jesus would send him to his new office. And, uh, and, and he, uh, he passed away on uh, Friday morning after 7 o'clock. Give us an update on uh, Doug. Well, he uh, <clears throat> fought a good fight, that's for sure. <laughs> this lady had asked, we spent some time together, and uh, he passed while Abdullah was reading from the Bible. I don't know if there's any other better way to go than he did. And uh, as I said, he fought a good fight. He fought us, he fought nurses, and then finally Jesus called. A little too loud that he went and chose that instead. Uh, we have uh, the ladies of the church, God bless them, are helping us Wednesday. We have to clean out his apartment. We have some men of the church that are going to help us move things, and if you feel so motivated, come and join us Wednesday morning. Um, <clears throat> other than that, a uh, pastor will pick a date for our service, uh, and we'll have that right here, um, obviously. Uh, there won't be any calling hours because he is being cremated, so uh, we'll just come and celebrate our friend. Uh, anything else, Pastor? To... Uh 
especially thank you uh, for journeying with Doug. And I know it wasn't easy for you. And uh, on behalf of the church, uh, you get to fight with Sharon White on what hanging basket you would like to receive. <laughs> but honestly, we thank you. It was not an easy thing to do, and Doug was not Doug some days. You know, he was a little it's argumentative. All, so all part of the process. It is. So uh, I, I think we all need to thank Nancy for our journey in the dog. <laughs> Discipleship is not an easy path, but it's there for all of us. Thank you. I'm uh, told by the uh, front office, one of the many women that I work for, that uh, there's another Faith and Family Night at the uh, Batavia Muck Dogs uh, game on Friday, July the 8th. We've ordered uh, 15 tickets, and uh, it's first come, first serve. Uh, call the office, see Anita, call me, and we'll have a good time uh, at the Muck Dogs game. I already got my hat and my jersey, so I'm all set. Um, we talked on the way in that she missed uh, uh, fall last year. Uh, she missed winter, and uh, you missed spring, but here you are. So. Other joys, other concerns that need to come before us this morning. Let me offer a prayer and then uh, uh, Trish will sing for us. Let us pray. Almighty God, in awe, we remember that you made each of us in your image and breathed the spirit of life into us. I marvel that your son Jesus took on flesh and bone just like mine and gave himself for my salvation. Help me to live this day fully open to your presence. Let all of us worship you alone with our minds and our bodies and our spirit, delighting in what is good and turning from what is not. Let me, Lord, love my neighbor as myself with all that you give me. Be patient with me and help me to be patient with others. Teach me how to bring peace to those who are troubled and to show kindness, especially to the weak. Today, let me, let us see your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
Thank you. I love the richness in your voice this morning. Thank you so much. If we're going to do a video, let's do it after children's time. Where are our beautiful young people? Can I talk with you for a while this morning? I got a lot of bills this month. I need some help. Will you help me with uh, Sherry's uh, prescription bill? It's a uh, nice. It's my dental bill. This is Sherry's dental bill. My Medicare bill. Will you help me with my Spectrum bill? It's from school. It's the gas bill, national fuel. This is a state farm. I, I bundle auto and home. This is another benefits plan. Thank you for your help with all my bills. I'm so grateful. I don't know how I could have done it this month. I just, I'm a little short. It made me think when I look, they're all, they've all been paid, so we'll gather them up and we'll put them over there. But uh, I, I, it made me think when I was paying these bills, what if we had to pay God for what he gave us and what he gives us? What if a bill came? I'm sure mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, when they look and they go to the mailbox, they always have a sad look on their face because it's another bill. What if we got a bill from God for this glorious sunshine today? <coughs> Later on this week it's going to rain. What if God sent us a bill for the rain? And pretty soon the corn is already way above our knee. And God sends his rain and his sunshine helps the crops grow. We have to pay for all the good things. for us. Would that be a lot of money? I think it would be a lot of money that we would have to pay for all that God gives us. Our family, our friends, our brothers, our sisters, all that. Mom and dad, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles. The bill would be pretty expensive. God sent us his son Jesus paid the price for our sins so we can go to heaven through our faith and love of Jesus. And we, we get no bills. That bill has already been paid. Paid for us a long time ago when God sent his only son, Jesus, on our behalf. Already been paid. So instead of writing a check or paying money to God, what does he ask us to do? This is how we pay our bill to God. We love him, we worship him, and we love others. That's all we have to do. Then that bill is paid in full. Lord, I ask your blessing on our young people, our Sunday school teachers, and all that we do here, especially for our boys and girls, our young people. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that they are a special gift to us. And we could never repay you except we will love them, we will make them safe here, and we will have laughter and joy with them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm almost done. I had a, uh, an epiphany. I was watching a ball game.
habit of uh, using chewing tobacco. So there's always a big bucket of double bubble bubble gum. Look at that. It's so fresh, the containers. This is good for about, what do my kids call them? About 30 chews. You chew it for about 30 times and then it's all gone. So everybody gets double bubble bubble gum this morning. I'll take your bills. You can put them right over here. Have a good time in Sunday school. Thank you. I paid your dental bill. Sure.
printed in your bulletin and is making it on the screen, I think. Call to worship. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. Will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Our arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Our opening hymn is Abide With Me. In our hymnal, if you want to follow along with the music, on page 700, also on the screen, uh, Dick will play it through once. We'll do verses 1 and 3, Abide With Me. Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 51. But difficult words for us this morning. A Samaritan village refuses to receive Jesus. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. And on their way, they entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. 
Then they went on to another village. Would-be followers of Jesus. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. May God add his blessing to this portion of his holy word. Amen. Where he leads me. We uh, tried something different this morning. It didn't work. I have enough things. Turn me down a little bit. I'm going to shout and scream. Um, I have enough things over my ears with glasses and hearing aids, and I didn't need a microphone. Will you pray with me this morning? Your word, O oh God, reveals your will for our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. Give us each the wisdom to attend to your call every day and make us ready to hear and obey. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray this morning. Amen. Say what you want about Jesus. 
you surely cannot accuse him of false advertising. In this morning's gospel, Jesus is honest and upfront about the cost of walking with him toward the cross. Jesus, God's anointed Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, is on his way to Jerusalem, where he will suffer and die. God's Son will be betrayed, tortured, and killed by us. That's a hard truth to swallow, and it's difficult for us to understand a crucified suffering God. Here's perhaps an even more difficult truth that comes through in this morning's gospel. Soon to be suffering, Jesus calls us to suffer along with him. You might think that Jesus would wait until the end of the journey to be upfront with his disciples about the perils of walking his narrow way. No, right here in the middle of Luke's Gospel, he tells them, my way is a way that few want to walk. Some churches and some pastors preach an easy or what I would call a watered-down gospel. Got problems in your life? Visit us for some inspiration, they proclaim. Join us for some instant satisfaction and some instant redemption and you will be made to feel much better. Jesus is the best deal anybody ever had. It just makes good sense to be one of his disciples because he is here to help you get the inspiring, uplifted, happy life that you desire. My friends, if you are going to receive a word from the Lord, let it be from Scripture. Better yet, let it be from your own precious time with Jesus in your prayer closet. Let your closest godly friends test that word with you to confirm it. Otherwise, if you allow anything to get in the way of the true gospel, you will end up in despair. Still, the gospel of common sense seems to be able to draw a crowd any time that it's preached. Jesus is the best deal you can have. Congregations are being told how to have happier marriages, how to find satisfaction in their work, how to live with a positive attitude. Some of it is good advice, but the advice given isn't much different than the advice one might receive from any fairly wise person whom you would ask, how can I get what I want out of life? What if Jesus did not come to us to enable us to live better lives? What if the way of Jesus is a way that is strikingly different from the way of common sense? I've got this on my mind today because The message that we just read makes this hard left turn. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And you know what will happen there. Jesus is about to take up his cross and go down a narrow path that few want to tread. And yet on his way, he invites people to walk with him. He sends a couple of his disciples on ahead of him to a village of Samaritans, a place that they surely didn't want to go. But the Samaritan villagers refused to welcome him. Ninth chapter, 53rd verse. The emissaries from Jesus face outright rejection from the Samaritans. Why did they reject Jesus? Because it says he was determined to go to Jerusalem. They don't reject Jesus because of differences with his interpretation of Scripture or because they found him offensive. They reject walking with him because of the way he is walking to a place that they refuse to worship at. And the disciples, after the Samaritans' rejection, urged Jesus to incinerate those Samaritans. Me too. I used to be one of them. 
blow them up, Jesus, if they won't follow you. Because I enjoyed the movie Apocalypse Now after my tours in Vietnam, and I enjoyed the line when Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore, played by Robert Duvall, said, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It's the smell of victory. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus is so patient with me and with all of us. James, John, and me didn't realize that as followers of Jesus, we are not on a road to revenge. We are on a road to redemption. Jesus' journey to Jerusalem wasn't a superhighway to superiority. It was a sacrificial pathway to service. Rejection was part of the scenery. Retaliation wasn't even on the map to follow Jesus to, do, to Jerusalem to be a disciple on the way with the one who is the way means taking that slap across the face and offering the other cheek. Disciples do not call down fire that burns. Disciples call down fire that heals and fire that fills with the Spirit as tongues of fire that came on those who were filled with the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Disciples do not call down fire. Disciples call up and call upon only the name of Jesus. Jesus continues down the road, and on down the road, Jesus is more graciously received by others. Three people come up to Jesus and announce, I'll follow you wherever you go. Each of these three makes an amazingly strong declaration of discipleship, and yet there are a few conditions. Even animals have a safe place to burrow. Jesus has no place to lay his head, he says. We don't stay at the Marriott Residence Inn every night. One of the would-be disciples has just suffered the loss of his father. He must first give his dad a decent burial, which is one of the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. And Jesus responds with a brisk, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and spread the news of God's kingdom. Not the most gracious words you want to say to a grieving person. Likewise, one says, I'll follow you, Lord, but first let me say goodbye to those in my house. And Jesus rebukes him, implying that he is unfit for God's kingdom. And though Luke doesn't say it for sure, I expect Jesus' entourage got a little bit smaller that day. Today, Jesus is rejected by a wide array of Samaritans. A recent poll conducted by the Pew Research Center indicated that a group of Americans, as you know, who identify themselves as atheists, is rapidly growing. Whereas rejection of the Christian religion was once shocking, today it's pretty much widespread. I heard a person on TV, a critic of the Christian church who characterized our faith as exclusivistic, racist, and homophobic. He appealed to, and I use his words, all thinking people to reject Christians and their childish beliefs. And yet that doesn't seem to be the air that Luke is attacking in this story. It's not those hostile, outwardly antagonistic ones like the Samaritans. Rather, it's those believing and affirming ones who say, yes, I'll follow you, Jesus, who seem to be the objects of concern in our gospel reading for today. Lord, I find you fascinating, and I have a deep interest in your spirituality, we say. Are you prepared to risk parents, family, and home for me, Jesus asks. Lord, your church is filled with nice people who seem a lot like me and my family. Put my name on that membership list. 
we say. Are you prepared to go with me amid people whom you despise and to try to be my church with people with whom you have little in common, asks Jesus. In today's gospel, Jesus says some tough things to those would-be followers of his. How many swaggered up to Jesus with, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go, only to fall away when Jesus specifically told them where he was going. How many among us this morning, having first put a hand on the plow, decided they really weren't fit for Jesus' demanding road? I confess that too many of my sermons sometimes are based on the assumption of finding out what people really want more than anything, perhaps a contented relationship, a happy family, financial security, peace of mind, assurances in old age, whatever, and then convince them that they can utilize Jesus and his church to get what they are so badly praying for. Might be why I have really preached on this passage before. Because what if Jesus comes among us not to be used for what we want, but rather to use us for what he wants? What if Jesus wants more than an hour a week from us? More than our hearts? More than our good intentions? What if he desires nothing less than our tireless working our entire lives for the full advent of God's kingdom. A woman quite a while ago emerged from a church where I was serving as I greeted folks outside as I typically do. She approached me and very softly whispered in my ear and she said, Pastor Wayne, had a difficult week. Trouble at work, bad news at home, and a lot of other family issues that I really can't share with you right now. Will you pray for me? I told her I would indeed pray for her. I said we could come up to the altar and I will anoint you and pray with you as the sanctuary was emptying out. I told her that I was sorry for all that she was dealing with, and yet I hope that our worship service that morning was of some comfort to her. Not particularly, she snapped at me. I came to church this morning hoping for some comfort, for some peace, for some help in my life only to be given an assignment for the next church fundraiser. Guess what? Sometimes that's the way it is when you dare to walk with Jesus. And I know what I'm talking about. Sure, Jesus, I'll go wherever you send me. Eloquent Flint, Chapin, Codnoy, Williamson, Elma, Batavia. I was told that these were easy appointments. One more thing and I'm done. You're not like those rejecting Samaritans. You haven't refused to receive Jesus. And you have indeed received him and you have welcomed him in your life and you have hit the road with Jesus as his follower. In some way or another, you are therefore like those who came up to Jesus on his way and said, I will follow you, Lord. To be sure, you may not be the most faithful follower Jesus ever had. You have reservations and questions and commitments and loves that restrain you from being a complete, totally dedicated disciple, and so do I. But still, here you are on the road with Jesus. You've kept things from him. You have not wholeheartedly committed to his way, but you are still on the way. So am I. You have been here since 1969. It says on the cornerstone, 
in that corner of the building. Some of you folks came here from the old Main Street Church before they tore that down. You have gotten out of bed on this beautiful Sunday morning, even if the assigned gospel was Luke 9, verses 51 to 62. As Jesus moves to his cross, you're moving toward your cross as well. Who knows what he may demand of you along the way? Who can say what tough truth he will say to each one of us? Which makes all the more remarkable that you are here, not just here listening to this message, but also walking the way of Christ. You know it's the way to the cross, and yet there you are, walking it anyway. You know that he may tell you things you don't want to hear. He will tell you the truth about yourself that you've been trying to avoid. Still, here you are this morning. And you can tell that this is a narrow, demanding way that he walks. Only a few in our town are here or in churches this morning walking with him. Walmart and Home Depot and Denny's and Sporta Kings are packed this morning. Many in our neighborhoods are like those Samaritans and the folks who came up to Jesus along the way and said, I'll follow you, Lord. Yet, here you are this morning, listening to Jesus, walking with him, trying to keep up with him, in spite of all the setbacks you've had in your attempts to be faithful to Jesus, here you are. You haven't looked back or taken your hand off the plow. There you are, walking the way that Jesus walks. Bless you this morning. Amen.
Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Beth, on keyboard and uh, Rick on guitar. Thank you. As prophets catch fire, as disciples draw flame, as apostles walk in the Spirit, O Holy One, Holy Trinity, fill us with fervent desire to enter your kingdom and lead us by the cross of Christ to live in the love of Christ both now and forever. Lord, be with us this day and be with us as we say the prayer that your Son, our Lord and Savior, taught his disciples to pray. We now say and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. This is our hymn sing day. And we're going to start with 170. Thank you. 
wonder. <laughs> then we're going to go to 310. He lives.
just a quick reminder, there is a basket out in the narthex on the, about this big. Put any number of things you like to sing in that basket, and the end of next month, we'll do those. Thank you. Brothers and my sisters, let your life show the goodness of God. Pray with your mind and your body and your heart with all of your strength. Thank the Spirit for simple pleasures. Guard your mind and spirit against false desires or ambitions that would lead you away from loving your neighbor as yourself. Build up the community around you. Live at peace in the body of Christ. Be loyal to that which is worthy of your loyalty, God's presence and God's future. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.